So welcome, folks. This is our, um, our, our post Equinox get together. Um, and um, I thought that would be uh, the, the, the kind of how these things, this is going to go is, is sort of different than one of the workshops or classes. This is just sort of a, 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 a friendly um, kind of uh, meeting in our, in our living room where we get to take a look at what other people did and talk about the experience and ask questions and sort of see what we noticed and share observations and things. The um, anybody can, you can unmute yourself. I think when you come into this meeting, you're kind of automatically muted, but uh, you can unmute yourself to, 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 to share things. And then uh, we'll just, uh, we'll, we'll see what was um, happening. And perhaps the, the best way of doing this would be for us to initially just go around and say who you are. Um, hi, my name is, and um, and and where you are from. Um, I will be recording this, um, and if you don't want to be in that recording, then um, uh, then then I would advise sort of not not sharing anything that you don't want to be recorded. Um, but it'd be I think useful to at the start here. Let's just um, let's go around and and say where you're from and we'll see what different kind of parts of the planet are represented on this call today, All right? So I'll start off. Hi, my name's Jack and I'm from San Mateo, California. That's just a little bit south of San Francisco. Um, and uh, so it's on the edge of San Francisco Bay, um, sort of central California. Who else is here? Hi, Kristen Antonio. Um, I live and work in the city of San Francisco. Very good. Hey, neighbor. Anybody else? Um, we're interested in where you are. Um, where you're from, um, so that we can Sort of have a sense of the the variety of of of, of views uh, that we got on this equinox. So please do unmute yourself. I'd like to invite you to 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 share in the conversation. And the unmute button is in the lower, usually the lower left hand corner of the screen. There's a little picture of a microphone and it probably has a red line through it. And if you, uh, if it is clicked, it sounds like this. So you, um, but then when you uh, click that button, the red line goes away and you can hear what people say. Uh, we've got uh, in the chat here. Oh, goody, goody, goody. Uh, uh, so somebody's uh, tuning in um, uh, from La Paz, Bolivia. So that will be <clears throat> that will be a very exciting uh, journal page. I hope we get to see that. Um, so Kristen, I think we're probably the most uh, chatty ones so far. <laughs> um, why don't we uh, just sort of uh, start this off and and uh, show people what um, what what you can show what you were up to. I'll show what I was up to. Do you want to go first or should I go first? Uh, if you wouldn't mind, because I'm in between periods and I have to teach physiology at ten twenty. So um, here is mine, and I use the potato method. And I think I might have over exaggerated in my degrees of height. So I think the highest height I got was maybe 70, mm -hmm. 70 degrees, but I'm not sure about that. It might have been lower. So for each fist, is it 15 degrees or is it 10 degrees? E each fist is 10 degrees. 
okay, I might have calculated 15 and my numbers might be slightly off, but I mean, the pattern's still the same. Yeah. The, the sun, uh, ro I'm back. the sun rose um, more east than more northeast, and then it set more southwest than west. So um, I did get that shortened amount of sunlight. So, and it was, and the, you know, it was more cumbersome um, doing it in the summer. So when we did it in the fall yesterday, it, was, it just was so much easier. But I think I did mess up a little bit on my uh, degrees. Yeah, so there, there's an easy fix to that. Um, what you can do is just put a little bit of white out over those degree markings. Oh, ooh, okay. <laughs> and, and you just change your scale. Because okay. you, you were doing the thing, so it, 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 you were kind of measuring with fists, so that, that still is perfectly valid. Thank but, you for that. But just in, on your notes, if you're putting each one of those fists in as 15 degrees, you can then retroactively change it to 10, okay. and then you go up on, an, on a different scale. Thank you. Yeah, I had, it was a lot easier this time, and I appreciate the pattern. Yes, it, it is neat to see. So before we had that arc going big, now we're a small arc inside of it. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, a lot tighter. And then it makes us start to sort of think about like, like what are we going to see on the winter solstice? That will be, that will be cool to see. Mm -hmm. um, Looking forward to it. Great, yeah, so I, I just sort of recalculate those, those, those things. And again, for, for folks who are watching, the potato method is, that you stick your hand out, your shoulders are square, the sun is directly in front of you, shining on your chest, and you put your, the bottom of your hand at your eye level. And then you start just counting potatoes like that, one potato, two potato, three potato, not with your elbows bent, your elbows straight. If you have your elbows bent, it brings the potato closer to you, and the closer mm -hmm. the potato, the larger a part of the sky it will fill. So you want those arms at, at, at full full extension that's and even though distance teaching is awful i was thankful to be home to able to be you know <laughs> to do yeah. the uh recording <laughs> otherwise i would have been at the school so there's a blessing there so hopefully we'll yes. be in some type of hybrid situation or maybe the uh winter solstice will be on a weekend i'm not really sure what date that is but thank you for letting me share absolutely um the um so so could you hold that journal page up one more time that's cool um let, let me i'm gonna spotlight you spotlight this video i like the um the you you've you've got you've already you're prepared for the next, the next several, uh, the next solstice and equinox. You've already got your color coding system worked out. That's, that's really cool. Um, this is going to be really fun to see this all come onto the page. It's neat how having a project like this, it just, it gets you, your brain ready. It gets your brain ready to, 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 to want to, to jump in and, and see what's going on in something like this. This is a really neat view. I feel like I'm back in the back in San Francisco. Fun. Thank you so much. Thank you. Really neat. Does does anybody else want to show um, their observations and and explorations for the day? Avia, good to see you. Oh, Sandra, uh, I'm going to uh, pin you spotlight Sandra right here. So, Sandra, please hold your journal up a little bit higher. Great, 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 great. There is that arc. Um, south in the middle. Um, and um, so it looks like you started and ended. You're able to, to start and end very close to sunrise and sunset. And Fairly close. It got real cloudy over the mountains at the end of the day, and I didn't get to uh, get my last couple of readings. So this is oh. at five fifteen. Yeah, denied. Oh, that's that's but that's really cool to see. 
So I'm in uh, Littleton, Colorado, which is right outside of Denver, Colorado. All right. Um, so are you at a higher latitude than we are in San Francisco here? Yes, I think so. Uh, latitude, is that the 39 number or the 105? It's thirty-nine. It's backwards now, isn't it? No, no, no. Uh, it just looks backwards on your screen, but um, okay. we we actually all, all see it. Uh, right. That's yeah. mine. So, so you're in Denver, Colorado. So you're a little bit further north than yeah. uh, Kristen and uh, and and yeah. and I here in uh, the San Francisco Bay Area. So Correct. what's neat to see is that let's go see your sort of maximal. Yeah you kind of got up to about 50 degrees. Right. And then it kind of hovered along there and, um, and then back down. So, right. and this is pretty interesting because when I show mine, um, at this lower latitude, ours went a little bit higher in the sky. But what we're seeing here with your journal page is just what we would expect, that a higher latitude, the sun is just passing lower in the sky. You know, if you are, you know, way up in Alaska, as, it, as the days get shorter, that sun, of course, is just going, you know, creeping above the horizon and then down. And that's sort of an extreme case. But everywhere between here and there, it's just going to get incrementally closer to that. So it's neat to see how your maximal sun altitude at your higher latitude is just a little bit lower than what I'll be showing in, um, down, down here. That's really cool. What method were you using to get this, the height in the sky? That um, sun map, mm -hmm. what do you call that? The target, sun target yeah. map, that worked really, really well. Didn't that? That's what, that's what I had going. I was blown away by that thing. It was just so and easy. And to me, to it was another visual for me to look at, too. Yep. Do you have your sun map? Yes, I do. Let me grab it here. Oh, look at that. Yep. You see that? I do. I do. Yeah, look at wow. those shadow lengths. That yeah, is, so my very first shadow went off the page. Yep. So that, that's why we have to use, in the early mornings, we have to use the potatoes. Right. Um, and, and, and then it, um, oh, that is, that is elegant. That is elegant. And I love how you got a bunch of measurements right in the middle of the day. Close yeah, I was together. doing them about every half hour. Yep. Um, and um, what, at what time do you think the sun was the highest in, in the sky? Well, let's see. Be, around 12.30 to 1.30. So, but, mm -hmm. And then, so one o'clock would be and sort of right. Yeah, 12.30 to 1.30. So that, I was finding the same thing over here. Um, well, when we check out my, my notes, yeah, that the, the solar peak was not at noon, but was uh, an hour after that. That was. That and was I didn't know if that had something to do with our daylight savings time. Oh, let me know about that. Yeah. There we go. We like that. That's 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 that's. I don't know why I didn't think of that. Yeah. Very cool. All right, so, this is neat. Hey, thank you. Nice target. Nice target. Uh huh. Fun. So how yeah. do I get myself off the screen? <laughs> oh, I'm oh, sorry about that. I'm going to cancel your spotlight video now. You are now officially um, off the screen. There we go. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, does uh, anybody else want to show uh, share uh, their observations from the equinox? Sadly, I wasn't able to complete it yesterday. I, I woke up not feeling very well um, and went up having to go in for COVID testing. Um, How are you doing but today? I managed to, I meant, yeah, I'm going to do it today. I managed no, to get no, up no, to no, the No, 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 no. Are you feeling physically better today? 
my head is still hurting a lot. And luckily my throat's not as sore as it was yesterday. So I feel a little bit better. Um, hopefully by tomorrow we'll find out how I am um, when they get back to me with results. Oh, but I did boy. make it up to the roof twice before, before my head hurt too much to keep going up there. Um, so that was nice. And I, I was just coming to see everybody's after party stuff because I, I, wanted, I wanted to get, you know, motivated to just do it again anyways. Um, sorry, um, I didn't get to do it yesterday on the day I, w I was supposed to. Uh, uh, I, so I, I live kind of close to you. Do you need me to pick anything up for you? Um, do you need any groceries run? I could just leave stuff on your porch. That is so sweet of you. Thank <laughs> you for asking. I think I'm, I'm okay. Um, but I really, really appreciate that you asked. Sure. So if, um, put, put me on speed dial if you need any help or support. Um, I can pick up anything for your, uh, your, your, your family um, and you. Um, just, just, just do let me know. I'm so sorry you're feeling yucky. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, let me... Um, Let's see, uh, let, let me uh, pop on my little document camera here. Boom, boom. And I want to, I had, I had some fun. I, I also used Target. And here we go, there we go. So this, this, oops, it's upside down. There's that. There we go. So this is my target. And uh, I also made some other sort of nature, natural history notes on it. A, a little, uh, had an unusual visitor in the yard. Um, in the morning, I was getting the kids ready for school. So I missed sunrise. And it, it, I was just so you know, focused on, on the, the kids in the morning that I, I missed. I was so looking, I'm like, I'm definitely going to do this, definitely do this. And then, you know, life happens. Um, so it wasn't, I didn't get out there until 924. Um, and already, you know, those, those long shadows had disappeared. And, but still the potato method was working pretty well for me. And it was neat to kind of sink, try, try, to, to get the height off of this chart, as well as use the potato method so I could kind of look between the two of them and to sort of see the, 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 the similarity between those readings. So again, if you haven't, if you're not familiar with the target, what we did is we put a toothpick in the middle sticking straight up and that toothpick was measured along the length of this line, All right? So a toothpick of exactly that length was glued vertically in the middle of this. The whole thing was oriented to true north um, using this little compass down here. And then I taped it down on the ground out there. And then just at different times, all I had to do is walk out and trace the length of the shadow of that toothpick. So these are shadows of toothpicks at different times. Again, my shortest was at one. And so um, there's our <laughs> daylight saving. Um, so the <laughs> sun comes um, um, up and down and um, the, uh, but, but it's neat if I, I, I then took with, with the, the way, the way that this cool chart works is to find the direction of any of these lines. Um, uh, the, so what direction is the sun? All you do is you take that line and you carry it all the way out to this outer ring. And that outer ring has degree readings on it and you can read the degrees directly off of this if you have oriented this thing to true north. And then to get the height of the sun, you just draw on your line and you look at where it stops. These circles tell you um, the height of the sun. So if you look there are little numbers right in here, zoom, zoom, right? See these numbers on the line? This is 60 degrees in the sky, 50 degrees, 40 degrees, 30, 25. So these are these little degree readings going out. I could get how high the sun is in the sky. So for instance, like on this one right here, it's right on that 50 line. So that would have been 50 degrees up in the sky. 
Here it's between 50 and 60, so maybe 53 degrees, 52 to 53 degrees, maybe 53 degrees, right? So it ends up, when I'm out there in the field, I just draw on a line, look at where that is, look at where it points, boom, boom, boom. I would then run back inside and take those readings and there we go, and add them to this chart. So um, I've got, so my, my real readings here, these two, these readings right here, I was able to, to I got off a computer. Um, but these ones here, I read out of the sky. And look at that, it's coming up where I was, up in the east, went up to about 53, and set in the west. So from about seven o'clock to seven o'clock, height at one o'clock, if we shift that back an hour because of daylight savings, it's coming up at six, maximum at noon, down at six again, um, if we ignore that daylight savings thing. So isn't that cool? That was just, and, and, I, and now I'm thinking about like, so what's going to happen here? Um, this, big, uh, what's going to happen at the next one? I'm, I'm anticipating this. I wonder if it's going to go down the same amount, which means that it'll sun kind of maybe get up to 30 degrees in the sky. I don't know. It'll be interesting. And I'm going to try to think about it more and make some predictions um, before the event comes. But this was, boy, that target made it so much easier. I would just, I could go out, draw on my line in a couple of seconds, get the degree reading and the altitude in the sky, come back, plug it in. And then I was checking these against um, readings that I was also seeing on the computer. And these um, directions and altitudes were just spot on. So that target worked really, really well. That was, that was my, little uh, geek out, bliss out. Um, and then I had fun just drawing other stuff right on top of the target. And I'm gonna cut this out and glue it into my journal. And to, to decorate your target and make it, make it feel special. Um, let me see here, back to the, the jack. Hi, it's me again. Um, does anybody um, does anybody else have a page that they can share? Um, uh, uh, Melian, is it all right with you if you don't feel comfortable sharing stuff on the screen? If I share some of your journal pages by getting them off the Nature Journal Club Facebook page. Um, you could make a note into the chat if you feel comfortable with that. If you don't feel comfortable with that, then, um, then that's, that's fine. But you did some stuff that blew my mind. Um, and I was loving the way that you were thinking uh, during this. I even posted your stuff, I believe, on the Nature Journal Club page banner at the top because I just saw that like, oh, this is like really, really neat thinking. I want everybody here to see it. Um, but I first want to get your permission to share it on this video. Um, maybe you could put a note in the chat if you are still here. Uh, while we're waiting for that, um, is there anybody else that feels comfortable um, sharing something that they, that they saw that they did? The, um, if you are on the Nature Journal Club Facebook page, um, I, don't, I don't think we're, we're hearing from uh, Melian. Um, if you are on the Nature Journal Club Facebook page, I want to encourage you to go check out the post uh, from Melian. Um, oh, oh, here we go, here we go. Oh, thank you so much. I'm going to pin this. This is, this is so exciting. This is, again, it, I was looking at this last night, and uh, so first of all, you know, here we go. So step one, we've got 
uh, really nice little landscape here. And we're, we are in Bolivia. And um, so if you look at this, um, so one kind of neat thing to, to notice is that, um, hold on, I need to zoom in on this. I need to get my full screen going here. Um, so we are, the sun is rising over on, uh, rising in the east and setting in the west. But notice that the sun is going the opposite direction of what you would expect, right? Uh, if you're a northern hemisphere person. So um, on this page, uh, all the ones in the northern hemisphere are... Um, our sun is moving as we look at this page from the left to the right. But here it's moving from the right over to the left. And, um, and so that's, that's really fun to see. So we are getting up to about 50 degrees. So I'll be neat to see a little bit above that. We need to see, I, I, want, to, I want to check to see if you're, the latitude of where you are is um, sort of the inverse of the latitude where I am, because both of our suns went up to about the same height. Do, do you, by any chance, uh, can you show us the page that you made that has the shadows of the tree? Everybody prepare to have your mind blown. Okay, <laughs> this, this is so cool. And I, what I want everybody to think about here also is what you would have to be, what, what you would have to be kind of going on in your mind to even come up with this idea. So what she's doing is she's using this tree as a hinge. This individual tree is a hinge. And um, she has a perspective three-quarter view drawing, and you can clearly see that because she put it on this sort of uh, this, 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 this 3D view going back here. So it helps you just in terms of visual thinking, helps you kind of orient to it really quickly. And then she's drawing in the shadow of the tree at different times. So you can see that that, that tree shadow, um, you know, starting, um, I guess we're starting over on the wall and then swinging around um, underneath the tree. Each of those, uh, um, of those views is then, um, is then, or, or actually maybe I'm going the wrong way. So it's, are we, um, give me a, a thumbs up if, if we're starting under the tree and then swinging over to the wall. Um, is, is, is that, um, so, but well, either, either way, um, whether you're uh, doing this early in the morning and having it start on the wall and then swing under the tree or starting sometime, um, midday with the shadow under the tree and then watching it swing over to the wall, this is, okay. oh, uh, my my English is not good because I speak Spanish. That's the reason why I'm a little shy to speak in English. But um, here I have uh, my my tree house, and this is my my wall. So I I use the the tree for for. Uh, uh, looking at the shadows, this, this is my first shadow, and you also can see the the another uh, shadow of my house. Then uh, this is the second shadow. At I don't remember this. I don't. Uh, okay, this is the second and the the third time that. I look at the shadow mm -hmm. and this is very interesting for me because 
uh, is at the the peak of the equino equinox. Sorry, is at uh, 12, 12.22. and then uh, in the afternoon uh, the the shadow disappeared because this wall is a little uh, yeah. tall and I couldn't see anymore. So uh, I want everybody to really look carefully at this because this is, I think, an absolutely brilliant way of visualizing the motion of the sun. Um, putting it on this 3D block and then tracking it with color-coded, overlapping color-coded symbols. This is such an interesting and useful visualization. Um, so I, I, I put this up on our, our Nature Journal Club Facebook page if you want to look at it. So just check it Thanks out again. Thank you very much. It, it is so cool. Yeah. This is, this is I, 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 I kind of looked at this and like, oh, what's, what's this? And then I realized what was going on here. And my, my, my mind just popped last night. Um, so well, the reason I want us to look at this is because I want you to, everybody to think about, um, you know, there's so many different ways of visualizing a phenomenon. And, um, and if you have more of these kind of strategies in your sort of mental quiver, right, then, wow, it's going to open up doors. How can you reuse man's idea here for other sorts of visualizations in the future. If you have that thought in the back of your head, it's going to, it is, it, it is going to suggest to you possible ways of visualizing things and thinking about it. What you're, you're, what you're seeing here is thinking on paper. In order to come up with a visualization like that, you, that's, that's really high level visual thinking. And we can make ourselves better visual thinkers by stealing good ideas like this from other people. So that's why I wanted everybody to just kind of like, ooh, oh, you can do that? Oh, and it's so neat the way it kind of wraps up on the wall. It's just really fun. Uh, did, did anybody want to um, share or, or, or comment or, or add to the discussion here? Any other comments or thoughts? Hey, what, Michael. So Brenda and I uh, did this kind of hastily, and we, uh, we, we sort of did a table. And we, I don't know if you can see it. We did a table of various stuff using the, uh, the shadow inclinometer method mm -hmm. and the, um, the paper uh, with, with a toothpick stuck in it. We're a little unsure if we got the height right and the paper oriented right and so on, but it was it was a fun experiment. We started a little late. We didn't really start until solar noon here, yeah. know, here in the Bay Area, which is uh, one o'clock just after your uh, your uh, Zoom talk yesterday. So um, uh, a couple of things that I noticed because I probably have a, too much science background in me is that <laughs> we had a we had a fair amount of there's a fair amount of error in this like. Uh, yeah, like as particularly as the shadows grew longer, and I was the uh, the instrument, you know, looking through the uh, figuring out exactly where, like, the angle of my head is very important, and where actually my eyes are in that shadow are very important. And it gets as as the as the shadow stretches, the face gets longer and longer. <laughs> yes. Yes. So there's 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 a lot of interesting air in there, and the and the same is true for the uh, uh, the the paper method. Like we're not sure we got that measurement right of that little little guy, the the, the little yeah. toothpick. Yeah, if, if the toothpick uh, if the toothpick's um, size is off, then 
the heights that you're going to be estimating based on those concentric rings will be off. But right. the distance, if you've oriented the map to true north, the, the direction of the sun will still be accurate. And you'll also right. still have a relative reading of those um, sort of shadow, shadow heights. Um, so one thing, one thing I noticed in the orientation towards the sun is that we did not end up at true west. And I thought we should probably be close, closer to true west uh, at sunset. And of course, we didn't actually have sunset here yesterday. The fog decided to roll in about 6.30 and that was that. Uh, but I'm not sure I could even have seen it. By the, by the time we get to sunset in my neighborhood, there there's, gets to be a lot of obstruction then. You know, there's mm -hmm. houses and trees in the way. It gets really difficult. So I think, I wonder if that maybe was uh, the paper being disoriented a little bit. Maybe it wasn't really on true north like I thought it was. I'm not sure. What did what did people come up with there? Because it seemed like we we started out at pretty close to 180. You know, due due south um, at solar noon, but we didn't quite get. It didn't look like it was going to get to west. Interesting. Um, the yeah, my, um, I, I wasn't able to see exact, I was kind of inferring sun position by light mm -hmm. bouncing off of clouds um, at the event, because there's, there's the uh, uh, inner, uh, sorry, the outer coast range between me and, and where the sun dropped. Oh, uh, you have that way, yeah. So I um, also didn't get to see it drop right down, but that, it, it seemed to be heading in the right direction there for me. Um, on, on the direction thing, something that we have to, to make sure that we're taking into account is um, where uh, both you and I are, there's going to be a 13 degree east difference between what your compass shows as being north and actual right. magnetic north. Um, so that's our, our declination difference for the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, and so when I took my final bearing on the sun, and then I looked down on my compass, it was not on west, it was 13 degrees to the east of west. Um, and that's because of that declination difference. And so what you have to I do is you have to actually add in or subtract in the, the declination difference. Were you um, compensating for... I, I tried to do that on the paper. I tried to adjust it, but it, it really looks because the, the final reading I got is at, at 1833 and I'm at 255 degrees. And I think it should have been 270 or pretty close. And 13, you add 13 to that, you get 268. Yeah. That would be that would be pretty good. Maybe a little bit too good for 630, but pretty good. because uh, so I think sunset's about seven seven oh five. 710 right now here, or should be about 705, I think, because of the uh, daylight savings time and the, and we're a little bit off um, on the meridian. So I, I think maybe my, I think that's one thing I need to look at is, is the adjustment of the paper. We had a lot of trouble because it, it really turns out, even though we live in a flatland area, there are hills near us, there's stuff around, that finding a good flat place where you could get sun. Yeah. If more than a couple hours was, was kind of an interesting, <laughs> you know, yeah. that's something you can think about, but kind of an my, interesting. For my, my final measurements, I had to pick up my board with my, my paper on it and go running around so I could find a patch of sunlight, reorient yep. it. First kind of, another thing that you want to do <laughs> is um, if there is a magnetic anomaly underneath where you put your compass down, it will give you an inaccurate reading. So what you want to do is you, I, I held my compass um, above the ground and I looked down at which direction it was and then I brought my compass straight down to the ground. And in some places in my neighborhood, as I would come down, as we get close to the ground, I would see the needle change its direction as, it, as I brought it down to the ground. So I could mm. see that. So I, I was 
Um, so try, you can try this with your, your compass. If you, if you're, as you're putting it down okay. on the ground, if there is um, a metal pipe or an, uh, uh, some electrical wires that are going underneath that exact spot, you're going to get a funky reading on your compass. And actually, there is, I know there is one right there, now that you mention it. The, uh, the, the story that yeah. I had it. Yeah, that I always kind of remember about this is um, my, my scoutmaster, um, when I was a, a, a little guy, uh, Joe brought us out into this, this big field. He had set up this, um, this, this course where an orienteering course where each little patrol in the Boy Scout troop um, had a slightly different coordinates and you kind of follow those things around. And if you followed all of your clues correctly, going the right distance in the right direction from each thing, um, then it um, you'd end up you'd, you'd end up at a place where there's a surprise. Um, mm. And oh no, and actually no, every every patrol had the same had the same um, had the same numbers on their piece of paper. So when you take your reading, all the Boy Scouts should end up walking in the same direction. But we were in this parking lot. And where we had, so we're starting our, our hike in the activity. And um, what we all did is we looked around for where's a nice convenient flat space to put our map down. And we put them on the hoods of the cars. <laughs> and, and so the, the, Everybody. <laughs> exactly. So each pole <laughs> then set off with just gusto and, and, so, and pull in different directions. Yeah. And uh, so that's, that's the effect of being on top of a magnetic anomaly. Um, so uh, where you go, just, just you're looking at your compass as it gets close to the ground. If you see the compass go, then, there's, then you need to move it to a slightly different place. Um, I found a lot of places where you know, I, found, I found a nice flat spot, put my compass down, like, oh, and there's just a little bit of a, a kink there. So that also might be something that is going on. Yeah, I, I think uh, there is a pipe. I think there is a pipe underneath one of the places where I had it for a while. So yeah. that that probably did affect. You know, one of the things that, that occurred to me. I mean, this is dumb actually, because of course this is true with this is how cl uh, clocks work. But the the shadow is a clock. You know, you, like when I'm looking through that inclinometer, my shadow is a clock, and of course my shadow went from being about three feet long to oh thirty feet or so before the fog came in. It was a it, it occurred to me that if I knew, uh, if I looked out and saw my shadow was twice my height, say, which is pretty easy to estimate, then I that I would know what time it was. And if I if I know that for like a set of latitudes, maybe four or five interesting latitudes, because it's going to be a little different every place and every season, then I know what time it is. Whenever I see that, I, I, I know what time it is. I, 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 can, I can set my internal clock. So if, you're, if your watch you know, doesn't work or your, your phone is dead or you know, whatever, it's a way of getting your, uh, getting your time bearings set. And uh, you might want to look into that. about that would be um, is that that will be correct until the sun changes its position in the sky. So for instance, yeah. um, at, you know, if you're thinking like it's going to be this long at noon, well, that's going to be different at that solstice from that solstice. Right. But what you could do is um, look at the amount of distance that the shadow has moved. So if you are kind of to, to tracking time, like we started this and that shadow was over there and now that shadow is over here. So in 24 hours, in 24 hours, there will be that the, it will do a complete circuit. Right. So it's um, the, the, the shadow is a 24 hour clock instead of a 12 hour clock. So each hour would be half of what we're used to seeing on a regular clock. Yeah. Um, in terms of the, 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 the movement of how you go. But there also is one other cool thing you can do, 
Um, and this is kind of flipping it the other way. And you might just look on online about this because here's, here's the teaser. If you have an analog clock on your wrist, how do you use that and the sun's position to find north? Hmm. Okay. That's our challenge for everybody here. That's a fun one. Can you use an analog clock and the sun's position to find north? And before you look it up on Google, the challenge is to geek out with it for a little while, to play with it and see if you can um, and come up with a, a system, a strategy. So here's, here's the spoiler, spoiler alert is it can be done. Right? Then, um, so, but before you just jump on Google, we'll want to use this as just like a thought experiment and maybe make some diagrams to, to, to play with that. Yeah, we could make, yeah, we could learn a lot from like going through our, going through our notes from this, I think, and yeah. laying them out, laying them out, you know, redrawing the shadows again on a, on a smaller, on a smaller sheet. Yeah. 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 There, there, it was, it was interesting to learn about the errors in this too, like the orientation, tricky, the, there's a, there's a lot of errors that build up and there, there are so many subtle places that this can go south, right? Right. Or north, depending yeah. on which hemisphere or you're north. in. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, but, um, so the, what, another kind of uh, wonderful example of this, um, are the sunstones at the California Academy of Sciences. Mm. Uh, so the sunstones are this, is this giant rock sculpture that was put in at the um, back entrance of the old California Academy of Sciences. And I think with the remodel, they may have taken it out. But what happened is this, 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 this sculptor um, had this, these wonderful sets of stones and it was set up so that at the solstice, the shadow would pass from this point here and would, would, would make a, be at a certain spot on this other stone. And at the equinox, so, right, so everything was just sort of set up. And what he did is he made all these things, and the, the sculptor who was doing this, and then at all these events, just noticed where those were and put in markings on on the on the on mm -hmm. the uh, on the catcher stone, and then put this whole these giant stones on a truck and drove them for an installation at the California Academy of Sciences. Can anybody think of what happened next? It worked great in the sculptor's backyard, mm -hmm. right? Where the sculptor was. But at the different installation site at a different latitude, it was wrong. And, and so <laughs> that was just, it was just one of these sort of same things. Like there's, there's so many little things that kind of, kind of can get, get, get silly in this. But how much fun to be out there with your, you know, you know, it gets us thinking about like, I've got my compass and then there's a magnetic field around the earth and, and that's got changes and it's got declination and then the sun is different heights and then the sun is the earth is at a tilt and like all of a sudden your, your brain is just dancing with all of these different ideas and, and how often or, or if you're using trigonometry and the cosine or the, sorry the tangent tables. To, to, to get the angle to the sun. Well, now you're bringing in trig and it's, it's just got your brain going like, you know, I, I haven't thought about all this sort of stuff in a really, really long time. And now they're just, they're all swirling together. One of the reasons I think it's wonderful to play with the solstice and the equinox is because we bump into these sort of strange, hard, goofy problems. Hey, Avia, yeah. Okay, so I have a question. Um, and, and maybe somebody who has sunflowers that are still alive can do 
do something of an investigation for me. Um, with somebody who has sunflowers and who also lives in an area with fog, mind seeing if the sunflowers still follow the sun in foggy conditions, and if they match with compass readings when you're trying to point out where the sun is. I'd be curious to know because I know that sometimes the fog gets in the way of doing proper compass readings, but if there could be some sort of a correlation or just an, an observation made between like if the sunflowers, I don't know, it'd just be interesting to know. I don't have sunflowers or I test it myself, um, but I'd be curious to know if the sunflowers follow and if you can take readings from those. So yeah, it's, what, what a wonderful kind of extension from this. Now, now it's got you thinking and us thinking about flowers tracking the sun. Are they kind of doing this on autopilot or are they getting a little photo signal that they're following? Um, that's a great question. That's a really cool question. I have no idea. I don't either. That's what makes me so excited. <laughs> But the fog shouldn't affect your compass reading. The fog would affect like your sundial reading and your um, your sense of where the Sorry. north is based on the sun. Yeah. Very, that, that, that's a fun process. Yeah, because so, yeah, you can't really see the shadows have, as much. Have, have sunflowers in foggy conditions? So here, Ivea, I'm starting to work mm -hmm. on redesigning and replanting a adventure garden for my two little daughters. And so because of you, I am going to plant sunflowers in it. And, um, and I will try to over, um, uh, that will be a project for me for next year. I'm going to plant sunflowers and I'm going to report back to you. Thank you. <laughs> that makes me so happy. Thank you. <laughs> It'll be fun. It'll be fun. Because who also doesn't like sunflowers anyway? I mean, like, go Kansas. So any other comments, thoughts, ideas from the community here? We have six minutes left, and then we're going to let everybody go. Does anybody else have fun things to share? Perhaps a, your journal page. So maybe we can end it um, here. I want to encourage people to please share your notes and observations on the Nature Journal Club uh, Facebook page. A uh, great way to share those things. If you did something like a sun target, you can um, uh, have fun decorating it either with um, natural history notes from the day or just get like crazy psychedelic. If you take you know, like fun drawing and just paint swirls and kind of go like, where does thinking about solstice, or maybe make diagrams around the outside of what is going on celestially with when, why do we get, can you make a little diagram, a 3D diagram that explains why equinox and solstice happen, right? Um, Another thing that might be fun to do is just to put in a guess at this point of what you think the sun is going to do on the, on the next solstice. Where do you think it's going to go in your sky? And because um, we now have two data points. And do you think it is going to be you know, the same amount or not. And because then when the event happens, either it's going to be similar to what you expected, or it's going to be different from that. And in either case, you've learned something. But if you just wait for the next one to show up, and then, you know, whatever it actually is, you'll be like, you'll find a, a reason to kind of like, oh, yeah, that, there's why I should have expected that. Let's see what you'd expect right now. Not looking it up anywhere, not Googling it, just you, your pencil, and see what you think. It, it's, it's fun to play with your brain this way. It's a beautiful play. And the more we pay attention to these things, the more fun we can have. So thank you all for being here today. Thank you so much for, for sharing those. And um, I, um, for people who 
came on at the end. Um, let's, if, if I could uh, get uh, uh, Melianne to just one more time to hold up that page that you have that has the tree shadows. Um, this is, um, again, a, a, such an interesting visualization. Um, I would uh, love for people just to have one more chance to take a look at that, or if you came on this call um, a little bit later, um, just to be able to see that. Ah, there we are. I'm going to, um, let's take a look at the one with the trees. Here we go. We're going to spotlight this video. All right, there it is. So again, it's in the morning, the shadow of this tree is projected on the wall in blue. So there is a 3D block diagram showing the tree and the wall. And then as the day progresses, you see the shadow shifting over into the green, into the purple, into the orange, into the red. And you're, so you've got color coding, you've got the shape of the tree. What, this is such an interesting way to visualize this. And notice that this would not have worked unless you came up with the idea of, oh, I'll make a 3D block diagram. I'll make a 3D block diagram. So that's, that's so that, that little piece, having that strategy in your visual thinking quiver is, I think, the, 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 the crux move. Because then you'll be able to take that same idea and apply it to all sorts of other different things. Such an interesting way to visualize this. Melian, thank you so much for sharing um, this with us from Bolivia. Um, that's really, really fun. Um, and for everybody out here, our friends in the nature journaling community, um, thank you for sharing the Equinox with us. Um, please share your sketches and your work with other people. Um, again, the Nature Journal Club Facebook page is a great way to do that. And I hope that you, from this conversation that we've had here, have some other thoughts and ideas about how to extend your um, to e extend your your thinking about these and other ways to play, whether that makes you start thinking about like you know I wonder if I can map magnetic anomalies sort of around this field like now I've got my compass I can do that or what are the sunflowers going to do or like I'm going to plant sunflowers I'm going to watch this you know it's what you want to do is get yourself curious about something and have that curiosity change your behavior where you're like huh what's up with that and then you can actually start tinkering with that we've lost in the society we've largely lost the kind of the aesthetic the uh aesthetic of the, the idea of being a tinkerer somebody who's going to mess around with something to see what happens well, what if i do that what if i do that like let's see if i can figure like that how would i show that Right? All those sorts of things, really great, powerful ways to go in your nature journal. You start doing this, you'll notice things. You're also training yourself about how to visualize, how to explain, how to show these sorts of things on your own piece of paper. So this has been your uh, Equinox After Party. Thank you all so much for participating and joining us.